uh, which is, as I say, only um, designed to act as a, as a stimulation for your memory, not a, a, an absolute minute as such. Um, we stopped the meeting in November at the point where um, we were about to take the evidence from the witnesses for the lead secretary, that was Councillor Hayes. Um, now, I do know that one of those witnesses isn't able to come tonight within Lockroom. She's been withdrawn as a witness. Um, and I do know also that those, uh, the Steve Vasey and uh, Kathleen Hughes have made their opening statements. However, in fairness to them, if you'd like to come forward, um, I would invite you to make your opening statements again. And then members um, may want to ask you some questions. But if you'd like to come forward, if you can switch the microphone on, if you can't, I'm sure somebody will help you. Mm -hmm. I think I'll probably just say that Councillor Phil Davis was the first of the witnesses, but we took him um, <coughs> first of all, because on the online when we met, he had to be away from Council Business elsewhere. So, um, it's, is it is it Kathleen? 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 Kath
integration and collaboration. The review states this recommendation will work to establish strategic and operational policies and procedures to ensure that a joint service offer across early childhood services is developed. This is specific to statutory services. We would hope that this could be expanded to include voluntary community and faith sector organisations as part of the integrated children's workforce, particularly as earlier in the document it states that partners will have a significant role in the delivery as a part of the decision making process. We would welcome clarification on this. Staffing structures, we feel that the development of more outreach work will enhance partnership working with our sector. Services are delivered by people, not buildings. And we know that children and sense of staff do the best they can in the very difficult circumstances for them. This is more for children and sense. A national survey undertaken by National Children's Report at the start of the year 2014 found that over 90% of the respondents agreed with the statements that our local or children's sense is important to our community. They also felt that the future of centres could be secured by engaging businesses and the wider public to make children's centres community goals. We feel local families would welcome the development of centres in this way, and indeed, some of our children's centres in Europe will only try their best to fulfil their role as a community goal. We would welcome the opportunity to explore this further. We are dismayed, however, that the review states that diversifying or outsourcing the management of children's centres overall will not be considered at this time. And in conclusion, we can link four of which was, we would like to see these to be put in place to enable the voice of the voluntary community and faith sector and families we work with are up, and, and families we work with are held at all levels of decision making during the consultation and in the future to ensure that marginalised groups including PME families and disabled people can access consultations in an appropriate format. It is vital to ensure that services for children and families are working in the most cost effective and efficient way. We would like to work together with Statue of Service to the best we can for rural children, young people, and families on behalf of the Liverpool Board and again the original statements from November. Thank you very much. I think we'll take a few minutes and then now I'm going to talk to the questions if that's okay. Um, I would like to say that I agree with every comment that's been made and, and some of the comments that I will make will over that. Um, I think I started in November by saying that we talked a lot about fairness and we talked a lot about budget cuts and we understand those cuts need to be made. But this is about making the decisions of the little that we have as fair as possible. And I would like members to still consider the strap line that is used in the council about protecting the most vulnerable in our communities. And my, my two main points regarding my concerns about the review and consultation is as Steve has pointed out, that the lack of consultation, the lack of clarity about what the consultation actually was, but also that I think in many respects the review is fundamentally flawed in terms of meeting the principles that councillors aspire to in terms of fairness, in terms of protecting our most vulnerable children and families in our society, and meeting the quote that's on the report that says the ambition and expectation of this review is that proven best practice becomes common practice because the review actually discounts using models of best proven practice by discounting nursery schools in terms of their status at the moment as integrated centres and children's centres and downgrading them to extended nursery schools. Leadership and management at Gamma's Meadow, leadership and management at LISO is outstanding. It seems crazy to me to, to not use <coughs> that facility, that level of expertise within this review. So it's at odds with sort of the, the set out of the review. From at least a more point of view, from my community's point of view, I do not understand <coughs> why my centre should take a 64% cut in one year having made over £100,000 worth of reduction in its budget over the last three years. My community sits in the top 8% nationally of local super alpha areas. And this review, indeed, decimates services for more than completely. There would be a little bit of resource left in the Lisa area, but it in fact leaves more than completely bereft of any kind of children's centre service. And in the Morton area, two LSOAs are in the bottom 10%, in the most deprived 10%. And I cannot just principally 
just professional integrity tells me that there is something fundamentally wrong with this. Thank you very much indeed. Um, anybody? Yes, hold on. I'm sorry, I should have said, does anybody want to ask a question? Yes, Walter. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that is it. Um, thanks very much for uh, your, your comments. Um, I was just uh, th thinking about the. Uh, I know that children's services provide a great uh, service, and uh, it has been very beneficial. You know, there's no, no doubt about that. Otherwise, you know, my party wouldn't have set them up in the first place. Do you know the last um, last time we had a review of this service in Wirral? Are you aware of that? In, sorry. It doesn't really matter, because okay. uh, uh, I'll tell you, uh, it was actually last review in 2002, and this is 2015, and things move on. Oh, sorry, is it my job? Oh, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Uh, everybody hear me okay? I usually speak loud. Um, <laughs> Yes, it was 2002 and things have moved on, this is 2013, and we look at outcomes and uh, all the rest of it. Um, I mean, are you aware of the local MP, Frank Field's uh, review of Suffolk? Su mm -hmm. um, well, Frank Field for many years has been highly critical of our children's centres because the outcomes, unfortunately, for many of our children are not good enough. Now, I don't mean that's because of the children's centres, but we're talking about the service now. Um, I don't know, do you ever see school uh, Ofsted reports? I am a school. Well, so okay. I, I have well, if you, school you will know, many of uh, our schools at primary level, we get um, where Ofsted has comment mm -hmm. that the children going into our primary schools are ill prepared mm -hmm. to start their school well, education. Well, sorry, um, you made a statement. Well, uh, yeah, it is, yeah, but you, I don't know the answer to that. Okay, I'll finish off by just saying that, um, that, question that is uh, Frank Fields, uh, the figure that they're, they're not performing in that way, and there's a need to rejig the service mm -hmm. for more outreach to reach the families that the good that you're doing at your centres. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what is your comment on that? And, and can I just say, if that's not part of your evidence, you may want to refer that question to. Uh, um, again, with the greatest respect to the chair and councillors, the reason for this call is for our point of view the fundamental question of how the consultation took place. It's not necessarily about the bare bones and how that will work, it's, it's okay. about asking people. <coughs> um, I'm, I'm the head teacher, head of centre at least in the years, and we are an integrated centre. We are an issue school at heart. Um, councillors may, may find it helpful to know that I worked in Cheshire, I worked in Bolton before I came to Wirral, and I was actually one of the very first officers that was involved in children's centre service delivery in Cheshire and subsequently Bolton and Wirral, so I know a lot about children's centres. Um, I'm not arguing that a review needs to take place, I think it did, absolutely, because you do need to consider, in terms of um, budget reduction, how, how that money is spent. I understand absolutely the agenda of school readiness and about outcomes for children. Um, I have a lot of statistics that I can throw at you in terms of school readiness and outcomes for children for where children start at LISA and the, the progress that they make and we've had that validated by us very recently, very successfully. And that is my point. At the beginning of this review, it talks about ambition. It talks about best practice becoming common practice. And I have the best practice, and Gary's Meadow has the best practice, and we have pockets of best practice in our current children's centres. It's about utilising what we have. In times of austerity, surely you hang on to the little gems that you have, and you use those to the best of your ability. And I just feel that this review fundamentally ignores those and takes it into a whole new direction, which I don't think is best use of resources. Yeah. And I don't think we get the outcomes that we're that searching for. Thanks very much. I've got a couple more questions. Um, I've got um, <coughs> Phil Crackle, did you have your hand up? Mike Sullivan. Phil, did you have your hand up? And then Castle Fraser. So one, two, three, four, okay? Did you have all the questions at one go? And then, you know, perhaps you can address them in, you know, depending on your answers. Yeah. 
thank you, Chair. Thank you for your uh, presentation again. Uh, it, was, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of your concerns surround consultation. Now, I want some clarity first. Out of the understanding of what has taken place with pre consultation, the consultation proper, so that a, an actual full blown consultation is yet to actually begin. Um, is that the case? I think that might be more for officers more than Kathy. More than, um, okay, well, so it's a question that's on the table. Then, 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 let, me, let me phrase it this way. If, if a consultation is, is soon to begin, which mm -hmm. takes into account your concerns regarding what's already occurred, that in some way address some of the issues that you've had. Bear in mind now that we are saying that <coughs> another conversation is, is about to begin. My issue is that it doesn't matter what we call the bit that's come before. I mean, we've got, I've got a document here that says in the Children's Centre 2014 consultation. And this, this is the amalgamation of the World Cafe events that took place. I find it interesting if we're now going, if, if what has gone before is not consultation and what we're going into this period of consultation, I think we've been led down a very tight path because we're only being consulted on one set of recommendations. Now, when I was involved in conversations with officers a long time ago now about changing the service and thinking about the cuts that we needed to make, that the £2 million saving was first identified. There were many options on the table. There were lots of different models available. And I find it a little scary, and I don't know if I'm allowed to use that word, but I'm going to, that regardless of what's happened before, we don't think our voice has been heard, and it's now been pared down to a very tight set of, set of recommendations, where what you do, you either say yes or no. And, and it's a little bit like a two-year-old getting dressed in the morning. Okay, when you say, I'm giving you a choice, you can wear whatever you like to nursery today, and you go, you can wear the blue t-shirt or you can wear the red t-shirt. And I just don't think this consultation takes into consideration of the best options. Can I ask you this? Well, I've got a few people waiting. Go on, quickly then. Yeah, as I'm conscious that we've yeah, got... Okay, okay. I, I understand your concerns was the pre-consultation. But from what I understand, and this is from the last meeting of two, the actual consultation is, is yet to begin. I just think we need to be careful. This is a few hours taken from the stuff that I've read, but we don't kind of pre-determine or pre-judge what is a consultation that's yet to occur. That's the point made. That's the point made. I don't think it requires an answer. Mike. Thanks, Chair. And thanks for the excellent presentations. Much appreciated. Mine's very simple, Chair. We've had a, a delay now, so no thought of her in November, we're now in February. Mm -hmm. Do you feel it's moved on since November to here? Are you any, I don't know if happier is, is, is the right phrase, but considering all your um, concerns, do you feel it's moved on anyway since we last met? Thanks, Jim. Firstly, no. I feel that we've, we've stuck in a similar kind of place and the, the, the point for me and the point for me <coughs> was this idea of there's a couple of pages, page 39, page 40, page 40 in particular, there are lessons to be learned for the voluntary community trade sectors who are often less prescriptive in their approach to meeting local needs. Can we back to the results and constantly consider ways to reinvent themselves as they pour into the marketplace? That's a, the, the review document. I can't find that this may sound rather clumsy, but going back to the previous meeting, I'm the only person I know from that day that voluntary community and faith sector by the link forum that was involved in any kind of consultation, pre-consultation. And that is going back to the original point from the very beginning. We are being asked to consider a document that is limited in its scope, that could be broader if more people were involved, and it was just, I will keep it quick. I don't want to just start this. Right, thank you. Right, okay. So, this isn't my kind of environment at all. Um, so, with this, again, at the last meeting we were at, the consultation I was at then became a pre consultation, which led to my confusion, and I was part of the process. And I still haven't sorted that out in my head what I was actually involved in. And if I'm even in a document that says that lessons with voluntary community pay, Lessons from family need to engage. There's, there's another 
page uh, of staffing, workforce considerations, effective operational frameworks, commitments at every level, support services during resource, share responsibility, improve outcomes. I know the first hand experience from talking to people on the ground, they weren't part of that process. I'm not saying that the document itself is poor, it's nothing, it's about the actual process of getting the information that we actually move forward within the six weeks following this. Um, can, I, can I just add, I actually feel we're in a loose position when we go through the next day. I think the staff um, with the uncertainty in, in terms of dealing with the situation where they when they review has been out in the public for, for quite a while now. And if, if you have if you look at the back and you look at the staffing structures, you can't help but think is that going to be me and to look at that for a little bit longer is really difficult. I'd also like to say I'm not convinced that we've learned any lessons from the Birkenhead Children's Centre inspection last April. And I'm just going to urge you to re um, inspect those centres within 12 months for an adequate inspection outcome. Um, the West Children's Centres were inspected in January and we still await the outcome of that report. However, I am not confident the outcome will be a favourable one. So I feel we're potentially in a worse position than we were even a few months ago. Thank you. I've got Phil Gilchrist, Leah, and then Dave Anderson. Thanks. Steve, thank you. Steve mentioned an Ofsted report. I think Steve said it was a, it was a failed Ofsted report. The only one I've come across, and perhaps I can be told whether this is the one, was about the Wirral, the Birkenhead Children Centre group, which took place 13th to the 15th of May 2014. I've read that report and there were things that were praised and things that were found inadequate. But the key thing in that, as I read it, was that there was a need for outreach to get to the families that weren't being reached. And I think that's a theme in the review, and I'm trying to work out whether we can actually have a common ground on needing to reach the families that are known, but need to be actually targeted, visited, reached, and somehow drawn in. Or, as... Uh, the guidance from the government in April 2013 says uh, a children's centre should make available university and targeted early childhood services either by providing the services at the centre itself or by providing advice and assistance to parents, mothers and fathers and prospective parents and accessing services provided elsewhere. And it's that kind of want to explore the future. Um, how do you feel the balances between <coughs> The, the, you know, the inadequacies about the outreach mentioned here and the guidance that says it can be in the centre or elsewhere. How do we get to getting to the people and is providing something elsewhere? If you were a signpost for it and said, well, actually, this service is happening down the road in such and such a building, not ours, but don't worry, you can go there on a Tuesday morning, whatever it might be. Is that an adequate response? Is that adequate help for parents? How do, how do you how do you measure that that's right for them? For, for, from our experience with the rural autistic society and within the Lake Forum, in principle, yes, as long as that organisation will sign for us in two, don't change. So, so it's the same, don't change. No, 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 Walter, no. Sorry about that. Like, Carry on, Steve. No, um, I'm so sorry. I don't want to go that. Whoever that signposting organisation is, and signpost to pay another, that other organisation needs to be aware of what's coming their way. It needs to have that so that the two organisations, the three organisations are involved in signposting myself. But one part of this document refers to rainbow sessions, which I haven't brought up because I don't know where up to this. But I'm, I'm the manager of the family services, and, and I organise and coordinate this rainbow session with the early year centres. I haven't been asked about it and it's mentioned in the document. So it's that kind of signposting all the families. Where do they go to get that information? I agree that's a centralised or if someone comes to the door and knocks on the door and how each of it. It's whether that organisation then knows what's coming their way. And that would be an ideal opportunity for the consultation process with the link or with another organisation to have that information backwards and forwards across through this process. Thank you, Chair. I apologise for that, Patricia. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've, I've got two questions, but, um, which haven't been asked yet, but I would like perhaps the opportunity to come back at the end of that. I don't know whether you're just going around. Um, I have taken out of the show. Okay, fine. Um, I've got sort of two questions. You mentioned 
um, the part of the consultation for the review were the World Cafe events. Yes. Now, I believe there's a bit of a debate whether there was 107 or 119. Either way, how many took place in the Northern Museum area? Um, my second question is, you, you gave the example of uh, a, child, a child getting ready, getting dressed for school in the morning, you either have this or this, very narrow. And you believe this um, process has been very narrow. Um, what, um, sorry, can you just answer the first question about the cafes? Um, the, the discrepancy in the, the amount of events, I think the review said it was 107. Um, in the document that I have, is this, apparently there's a summary of 119 cafe conversations, so I don't know where the discrepancy comes from. There were none explicitly in the Lisa Morton area, and there were equally none in Gammy's Magic, so the, the two maintain those two schools, there were no events explicitly held within those buildings. However, I have found out today, because you can imagine I've gone through this again and again and again, there was one event that was the Wallace Easter event that was actually held in our garden, but they were families from across the Wallace area. And when you look at the feedback from that event, I would, I, I, I think this, this point has been made, I think Steve made it, that families weren't aware of what they were being asked because the answers within the consultation document doesn't match the question at the front of the consultation. So, for instance, it talks about if you were to continue to give children and families about their start, we can. What would a reduced early years and children's centre offer look like? And then if I read out all the comments to you here, it would be what we're doing now. It wouldn't be a reduction in service. And I've tried to talk to families about did you hear? Well, you know, there were 34 people that took part in this conversation, and not one of them can remember why that conversation took place. And it didn't take place with any member of my staff. It was a member of the Wallace Children's Centre staff team. So, again, it just adds to the confusion of what was it all about? Okay, I think we've understood the quality of the consultation is questionable. Thank you for that. I'll ask officers. Yes, and some of these questions are probably yes. best. Um, both. My second question about the, the choice, <coughs> we believe that the recommendation is very narrow. So what other model or models would you suggest? If, if you are criticising this, um, how would you change it or make it better? Um, when, as, I, as I said, probably verging on two years ago now, there were lots of models that we first looked at. I would take the aspirations of the review very seriously. I would take the council's aspiration to protect the most vulnerable. I would take the ambition of best practice within common practice. I would look at outcomes for children and families. I would then look very strategically at where we were placing this limited amount of resource. And I would do it in a way that took into consideration the areas of deprivation, where we have proven leadership and management, and where our data shows that what we're doing works. I too am a great believer in outreach services, but you have to work with the communities, you have to work with children and families. We talk about hard to reach services and we talk about hard to reach families. The reality of this is you cannot plonk a service somewhere, signpost families to it to say go on a Tuesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. They will not access that kind of service. So you have to look at the gems within the system and be very strategic about that. And obviously I'm the head teacher, the head of centre of a nursery school. I believe very strongly in nursery schools. Wirral has, that we're blessed with three, two very big integrated centres. You have your infrastructure starting to emerge just by those two things <coughs> alone. And then I would target the, the results. I would look at Broken Head, I would look at CP, <coughs> I would look at areas like Lisa or Morton, and I would build a service that is based within those areas. And then I would link with partners, I would link with other funding streams that we have in the council, so the Trouble Families Programme. I would work very closely with family support. 
And it's about building structures in a completely different way. But it's being brave enough for the council and officers to let go a little bit more and to work in partnership with organisations like the nursery schools and with Steve's organisation. Thank you very much. Um, I've got David and then Tom, and then I think we probably uh, are we okay. Uh, uh, okay, I'll And I'm, I'm, I'm anxious, I've got David. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Um, as I interpret it, the main thrust of this calling is to establish the adequacy or otherwise of the consultation process that uh, has taken place. I think we should avoid going down cul-de-sacs if we can. That, to me, as a deputy on this committee, coming in from the outside, that is what we're looking for. And this is why your statement, I hope your presentation was fantastic and very, very constructive and uh, positive. But because of that, my attention is drawn to the section a methodology of the review, which you stated we are concerned that the review process was undertaken without representation from the voluntary community and faith sector on the core group, despite the review documents stating otherwise. Now that is a quite clear difference of opinion between what is being told by the offices or others and what is being told by the faith groups or other groups, not only yours, but others that made this comment in the previous uh, meeting that we had on this subject. And I'm very concerned that we have this disparity polarised disparity between officers' opinions as to where the consultation took place and your opinion as to whether it was or wasn't or flawed or otherwise. And I think that is what we have to here consider. I'm not so interested in the detail of what's going on. I'm trying to take an overall view, as I always try to do, of the whole process. And what, well, what I'm trying to do is ask you specifically whether you genuinely believe that nobody consulted you at all That's on the question, and I think it could be a quite a short answer. The question is, do you stand by that statement? And yeah, then the next arm of that will be to ask yeah, okay? So quite a short answer, yes, or no, do you stand by the statement that no member of the voluntary uh, community sector were involved in the court groups? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to stand because I was part. I was the only person. I stand by the statement that I'm the only person I was aware of who was also oh. cast on the special. One more quick caveat on that is I'm representing Lynn Lockwood who was the Lib Forum chair. So if somebody said something to her that she was not consulted. I have to say, um, there was a, Lynn Lockham was down on the list of, don't want to be picky, no, no. But, but Lynn Lockham was down on the list of original witnesses and has now left the position she was in. Um, I think Councillor Hayes was asked, did you want to bring somebody in place of Lynn Lockham? And the answer that came forth, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but this is how it came through for me, that he didn't want to bring someone in, play, in place of Lynn Lockham. So as you were on the original list of witnesses, you came in that position, not as a replacement for Lynn Lockham. You might have a view about what Lynn Lockham may have said if she was here, but she's not here for us to question her. So I'm sorry. I don't, no, think, you, I don't think you can say you're here in place of Lynn Lockham. And I, I'm very good at it, but I think we have to stick with procedure. I appreciate that, Madam Chair. Apologies. Yes. Have a quick second, Andrew. All I was really trying to do was try and establish the yes, truth. I think, and are, I think we're here about truth, we're not here about interpretation or here, there, whatever. We are trying to establish the facts and draw some conclusions from those facts. Exactly. And we seem to have a polarised opinion exactly. on those. Exactly. I think the next line of just needs to go to offices. I was using that as an example. Yes. Sorry, yes. Yes. No, no, I've often written the question. I was saying, I think the next time, the next. Avenue for that is to ask the same question. Yep, okay, that's fine. Thank you very much, Chair. Tom and then Phil. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, I think the main thrust of your argument is that um, it's about free consultation, how um, your concern is that it's just one recommendation and that we as an expert haven't had a chance to shape that recommendation. That concerns me greatly. But as a commission service, I just want to know what support you receive from the local authority. Do you have any dialogue um, prior to that? Have you had any opportunity to shape services or reviews? I um, have been at Lisa for nearly three years now. And I have got to say, when I first came, um, it was just as my centre was moving from being a <coughs> centre, um, funded by the local authority through to an SLA. So we were moving to the commission service. And as a commission service, I just want to make a point that we have never ever gone over our SLA budget. We have always brought our service in in line or indeed just under budget. Um, and for the first about year and a bit, we felt, and I think I can speak also for my colleagues, 
we felt very included in the Children's Centre agenda in terms of the leadership and management of the team. We went to Children's Centre managers meetings and anything strategically that went on, um, we were very, very much a part of. I have sadly got to say, for the last about 14 months, from about November 2013, I feel totally excluded from that process. And actually drifted off as a commission service. And luckily, um, I have expert knowledge myself, I have a very strong governing body, and I have some very strong supporters around me in terms of school improvement advisors that the school have commissioned themselves and has children centre experience and we've used that expertise in the main over the last 14 months. So I would reiterate really the comments in the book of head children centre inspection about the lack of leadership from the local authority. And indeed I would also like to add the point that Councillor Gilchrist made about outreach. I think it's not for the want of trying. Staff teams have tried incredibly hard, and in fact, the report does reflect the hard work of the staff teams. I think they have been poorly managed and poorly led, and that goes all the way up to the authority. Thank you very much. Um, I've got Phil Gilchrist and Dan Thomas. Thank you, Chair. To make sure I don't confuse everyone, Page 48 in the paperwork for the 12th of November is page 60 in the paperwork for tonight. And both those charts appear to be the same chair and give a structure of a staffing structure spread across districts of Birkenhead North, Birkenhead South, South Wirral, West Wirral, Wallasey, and business support. Uh, are our witnesses currently saying that there should be some breakup of the structure in Wallasey that they would comment on in the consultation. As I read the chart for you, Chair, Birkenhead North has four and a half senior workers, workers and assistants, so does Birkenhead South. Wallasey is nine people described as Wallasey. Uh, does our witness have any comment on that structure? that you would feed in either in consultation or that might have happened or would in the future. This is the staffing structure from September 2014. So this is the current staffing structure as I'm led to believe. My fundamental argument in terms of distributing the resources within this review is I believe too much of the budget has been taken out of children's centre service delivery and it's been placed elsewhere. So £1.1 million pounds of the little resource that we have left is proposed to be set to family support, the low county family support team. So indeed makes it is detrimentally affecting the staffing problem that we have in children's centres. And I would question whether that resource is wisely allocated to the local party family support um, team at the moment, as we have very little evidence that the gateway referral system is actually providing value for money. I would think very, and, and I, just excuse me because obviously I can't sort of get this into my head totally just right now, but what I would be saying is we would need an allocation proportional to need. So, in fact, Birkenhead and centres like Seacombe and staff in Lisa and Walton, we would have more staff in those areas than we would in other areas of Wirral. And I, I hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I understand the point. Thank you, sir. I feel right more than that could be the last question, I think, for all of these. Um, Phil actually covered quite a lot of what I was going to ask, but just in terms of the review itself, like you mentioned earlier that you do understand the need for the from what I understand, what I've read, it is to try and target the now more limited resources in the past. Um, and I still, I, I can clearly see some breakdown in communication that has kind of occurred. Just one thing I can do, what do you feel what would be useful if a proper and more full conversation comes into place? I think um, more clarity to the people taking part, so the sort of significance of the conversations that would be in help. I think more specific feedback to the people that have attended these consultations or part of the process. And to go back to my finishing remark in November, we have targeted this document 
are they the right targets based on information coming from the families, the people that we work with, the people that we support? Third sector, community of faith, colleagues and short sort of children, census families at graduate level, difficult to engage families, are they identified the right targets for those people? Thank you very much. The, report, the review does go some way to addressing proportionality to me. However, from a Lisa or Morton point of view, it does not. And if you do have a look at some of the, um, the appendices, the maps, there is on page 58, page 30 of the review, page 58 of the documents that you have in front of you, you will see that there is nothing from Seacombe to West Kirby. And in the middle of that area, councillors, if we have councillors here tonight, we know that so in the northern areas will know that that is some of the most applied boards that we have. And there are no services at all in that area. I do thank you both very much. I know it's been a I'm in my got which one, but going back to the question on page 60 that when you look at the four constituencies, you've got Birkenhead, Morrisside, Rural West and Wallasey. If you look down the Wallasey, it's got the three CA, Van D, Van D, Van B, there's three of each. But if you look at the Birkenhead, Birkenhead's actually been split. If Birkenhead wasn't split, it would be the same. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in. Oh, sorry, it was
change how the early years service and children's centres do their business. We also change the configuration of the advisory boards and again further work is needed to bring much greater clarity as to what services are needed in each area and for which children and families we should be providing that service. So that will inform how the advisory boards operate and how they exercise good governance and accountability to check that, that those children are being reached and that work is being done. And also functions such as the business team, which was reviewed in a central team that was reviewed in 2013, was reduced. Um, and we need much greater clarity there because this team is responsible for making sure we fulfil a much wider early years function, ensuring that there is sufficient childcare for working parents, and if that's the private childcare, childcare in schools, uh, providing advice, information and assistance to families and ensuring that there is advice, information and training for our childcare providers. So it's got a very far reach, the services that we're talking about, the not to farmers. Looking nationally, the Good Children's Centre is one which works with all partners and at the very best is successfully in identifying disadvantaged children and families and providing the right kind of support at the right time moving quickly towards engaging the multi-agency response and bringing together health, education, family support and specialist services to meet children's needs. Our review to date has identified that whilst we see policy services provided through children's centres in Wirral, there are some challenges which need to be addressed. And these are also identified through the offset inspection of the Birkenhead Children's Centre Cluster, which is the published inspection that we need to understand who the targeted groups of children are. We need to focus and target our service much more. We need consistent and sustained access to services <coughs> by young children and families from targeted groups. And, and the 2013 document <coughs> the third guidance refers to targeting the 20% most vulnerable children. And also we need much better tracking and progress, tracking of progress and measuring the impact of our intervention, so what, uh, have we made a difference to ensure that we narrow the gap and support school readiness. And some of these issues are national issues as well, and uh, they reported in the first HNCI report that said the sector, the earlier sector, is actually experiencing turbulence nationally at the moment. What the review has found is that there are strong partnerships across the service, and this position must be extended to strengthen uh, the partnerships to deliver the good outcomes, particularly that children are ready for school. And that's something which has been endorsed by the Children's Trust. And whilst the review talks broadly about all partners, there is a <coughs> distinction about health and job centre plus, who are statutory partners. And in, in their respect, we need to have a much stronger commitment from them that's rooted in a delivery framework and a memorandum of understanding. The methodology for the review which has resulted in the consultation has been as broad and as inclusive as possible. We were working within a, a time scale, with an imperative, we had the Birkenhead cluster inspection, we got the um, budget savings that we decided upon by council, full council, in December 2013. So there's a bit of a burning platform to move ahead with this review and to produce a document that we could go out to consult on. As I say, the review has been as broadly inclusive as possible to ensure it covered the original ambition for early years and children's centres, to make them a very really central place for reducing child and family poverty and supporting families by making better use of joint resources and to be part of the wider regeneration agenda. Future early years and children's services will have to be flexible enough to respond to the changing gender and priorities, such as working as Cathy referred to the Children Families Programme. And in conclusion, I'd just say there is a noticeable shift away, taking place away from universal services. I think some of our children's centres in rural have been operating like schools for the not to farms, a universal provision. And the more recent guidance is that we must become a much more targeted service and increasing support for families on the edge of crisis. 
The review is clear that early years services generally will continue to support a universal service from which a whole family approach uh, can be built. Children centre staff and their partners are trusted in our communities and they're able to recognise, support and intervene when it becomes necessary to do so. So our partners who continue to work in a universal way, who we work very closely with, in include health, education, uh, many voluntary community and faith sector programmes, which is why it's been important that we've attempted to consult as broadly as possible with targeted support colleagues and those working in that broader universal service. I'll hand over to Deborah now and we'll give a brief introduction about the consultation um, and the review so far in the consultation. So the review was sponsored by the Cabinet Member for Children's Services. We tried to make it as broad as possible um, with the Director of Children's Services as a champion. The work was project on the Head of Service, which is myself. The review of early years in children's centres progressed with a strategic core group of cross-organisational representatives who attended four workshops and advised the approach. The core group considered the review against a backdrop of internal to Wirral and national developments and the required financial efficiencies, which at that time were £2 million. It reflected recent research, which is things like begins before birth, weight trust materials, best practice review, <coughs> the market review, and the HMCI report that Julia has mentioned, um, and for Children's Centre's recent works. So it took into scope a lot, of, uh, a lot of work that was already taking place and research that had been validated. The statutory partnership requirements for health and the JCP, along with the wider stakeholder offer of local and other partners as local delivery methods. Key requirements to review was to establish how the service will target and ensure access by those children and families most in need. And Julia's mentioned extensively that we've got to change the way that we work, we've got to become a more targeted service, but within a, within a, a graduated offer where there will still be universal <coughs> services and a visibility within our communities of early childhood services, namely education, the three and four year old offer, the disadvantaged two year old offer that's a more targeted <coughs> offer, um, and health services particularly. We know that our local <coughs> community and faith sector also do masses of work at a community level and often on a universal basis for families in a local way accessing and providing services. And we continue to want the buildings and the children's centres to aid, enable access by those, by those groups. Um, part of the, the way that we wanted to continue in terms of the development for the future <coughs> through the early health approach, we've talked a little bit tonight about the gateway offer and making sure that there's a single point of access for children and families who are starting to find it very difficult to cope or need further intervention. And we wanted early years as early health to ensure that it was part of that, that offer. Um, it, it considered the future use of the children's centre buildings and outreach, ensuring both coverage for a children's centre offer um, that, that many of our families have come to trust and know and use. It considered future government arrangements, future proof services and the centres through advisory boards. The objectives to the review were very extensive. And it was to make explicit the requirement for statutory partners to work together more effectively, reduce inappropriate amounts of service to children and people and families in rural to the benefits of key stakeholders and the wider community, at the same time as improving outcomes and reducing costs for public works. To facilitate service transformation by advising a fit for purpose model of delivery against a changing landscape within a reduced funding envelope. To consider the imminent progress of effective information sharing and the implications relating to information sharing that we, we struggle with as a, as a borough. To refresh systems and processes that are very out of date or are no longer fit for purpose. And to review and refresh processes and shared pathways in line with the early years and the developing early health offer, including our gateway and our CADT, which is our pathway and for de-escalation and escalation processes in and through and out of social care. To consider areas of learning from the local authorities, the review completed during 2012-2014, so we looked at what other local authorities were doing in desktop research and by contacting some of our colleagues in other local authorities who were going through a similar process. To identify key staff development needs and results of service transformation. To support the development of quality and audit tools and processes on a single and multi-agency basis. 
and for consideration of staffing structures and roles for the delivery of early years services. I want to point out that the staffing structures that have been detailed to date are indicative structures and will need further consultation. That was a sit down to look at what money we would have available and how we could apportion that across our service offer. But that's not a definitive outcome for service review that will um, that will take will take forward into consultation. We'll look at that with, with um, great detail. I want to just talk a little bit about the PAFI events that have been alluded to. That was that was local, not public consultation. It was a form of public of consultation if you look at what consultation means. But it was through our advisory boards, so our local governance of children's centres, that decided who they wanted to have a conversation with, to raise awareness, to tell them what was happening, to make sure that they were aware of budget cuts and to changes to children's centres. So they were preceded by a short presentation and it gave people the opportunity in a very informal way to come together and have a conversation. The collective, um, uh, the collective information that came from those kind of conversations has been, has been used to help to shape the document and it's that document that we will then consult on. So it was pre in, in a sense of helping to shape the document and the approach, not what the document tells us in terms of consultation needed for the, for the, um, consulta the, the next part of the public consultation. So in summary, the review was scoped and project detail brief Corporate representatives to take review, for, review forward, identify and invite to attend and contribute throughout four workshops. Local conversations as World Cafe events facilitated and one to one group meetings were held. Research was considered and desktop research against other local authorities considered. Um, and significant developments during the period that has not stifled but has served to refresh required developments of the service. And that sees us start to look at an outcome framework that has been looked at and endorsed by the Children's Trust. And that will help to align the service offer focused on outcomes. We have to become a much more outcome focused service to ensure that we can demonstrate that we are effectively meeting the needs of our youngest children. And to date, we would struggle to do that in terms of having tracking tools, uh, looking at the impact of the interventions which I also have to demonstrate in terms of the birth and head inspection, was seen as good, but then you have to say, so what? So the services were good, the delivery was good, the access by families was good in terms of numbers, but what we couldn't do was demonstrate who those families were in terms of access and the impact that they were having. We've continued to look at the two-year-old health and education review as, as, by, as, as advised by the government that will come into force later this year. And we've, in, we've implemented a tracker system to start to show that we can evidence the impact against activity. We've outlined the development plan for the workforce. We now have named social workers identified for children's centre groups. And we have social care data routinely shared to advise service offers. We work with the Borough Registrar Service to complete children's centre registration. And the pilot scheme will begin in April to site a, registra a registrar session in a children's centre to look if we can increase uptake of services by getting in early when children are first born and we, we can become recognised as an essential service. Thank you. I think I'm going to take the first question, if you don't mind, and use my privilege as chair and make two questions. First of all, on the subject of consultation, are you able to give an assurance that the consultation going forward will be responsive? That's the first question. Yes. And secondly, you mentioned outcomes on a number of occasions. Can you tell us what the outcomes are? It's about that. Yeah, the, the outcomes. The outcome is a single outcome that is ensuring school readiness. There are four high-level indicators. There's the, there's, the, um, there's the Healthy Child Programme that has a number of health um, determinants for our youngest children that is determined by our health services. There's the EYFS, the Earliest Foundation Stage Framework that we work to and we would want to make sure that all our services are in line with that where this child development needs identified and taken forward. We have parenting capacity in terms of parenting programmes um, and improving capacity to parent and understanding earlier where parents haven't got demonstrable capacity to parent or to parent or to make changes to their parenting capacity, which means we will take children into care early where that's appropriate so that placement planning for children is more effective. Uh, and we will have a look in terms of the high level outcome about economic development to make sure that this whole programme sits as part of the wider regeneration to move our young parents 
and our parents who um, are looking after young children into employment along, along the side of the government uh, requirements to do so. I may just chair a very brief day. Um, I've seen the draft programme that's produced, been produced in respect of the six week consultation and it is extensive right across the world, different times of the day, different venues. The, some of the co very rich comments that were produced by the previous witnesses are precisely the kinds of feedback we want. I think Councillor Davies, when he gave evidence, talked about the start of the 10. This is a consult, this is a review document, and we want lots of feedback, local feedback from all our partners, uh, parents of children accessing centres and services. We want that rich feedback to inform how we go forward. And the final bit, Chair, I would say, is that if there is any opportunity for the early years review document to be scrutinised by the Families and Wellbeing Policy and Performance Committee, I would really welcome that. So the cross-party <coughs> members have opportunity to look at this in depth and offer their views. And can I say before I start to take members, actually, have we not been delayed by three months? I would have really welcomed adding this to the work programme for families while we didn't miss that opportunity properly for this municipal year by the delay. It's very unfortunate, but thank you for that. I've got Tom Anderson, I've got Mike Sullivan, I've got Leah Fraser, I've got Jeanette Wilson, and then I'll come down, okay? Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was just a bit shocked with what Deborah said because the whole reason I was calling was for the document, um, which is going out to be consultation for staff and users to have the opportunity to shape it. And by your own admission, you said the Cafe World Bank weren't, weren't a proper consultation, they were to tell them what's happening, what we prepared for the evidence that people didn't remember, but what was happening. I have, I'm just chasing that to speak to, in my opinion. But how can you, so how can you be confident that that document that you come talking on is, a, is accurate and is the best for the best of the service? And also, why do you have one kind of recommendation in there if it's, if it's going to be a consultation? Um, um, a document has four recommendations. The consultation was real consultation because it was gathering the views of our wider service users and at a local level to shape the, to shape the document. So we were, we were interested in what, uh, what people had to say. We also worked with a core group and had one-to-one -one meetings. It wasn't the only thing that we did during that, that period of time. And we also looked at, uh, at, at research and what other people were doing as well. So, the, um, the consultation in terms of that community level was to ensure that we raised awareness that we were having a consultation, that we raised awareness that there would be a review of the surveys and that we elicited those views of those people who are closest to the use of the surveys. Just to, just to follow up on this, you said earlier that you decided to be wanted to us, and in that case, why wasn't the head of Lisa Mormi, Lisa, um, asked? involved in the consultation? Mm -hmm. Are you confident going forward that everybody in those in those areas has been consulted and will have the say on the pre-consultation document? Uh, I'm confident going forward that people will have the opportunity and I'm confident looking back that the head of teacher of Lisa was invited to sit as part of the core group. I'm also confident that there was a consultation <coughs> session, session held in Lisa area and that consultation sessions were held with a number of groups that um, used services in and around the area. Thanks. Um, <coughs> My main concern tonight, after listening to Kathy and Steve, and then listening to your presentations tonight, as David said, is the polarisation. And I'm in direct eye line here. see her shaking her head when things are said. <coughs> so, could you explain in a bit more detail <coughs> how you envisage the remodeling? And my biggest concern, I think, is, Tom's just pointed out, are you going to consult with people like Kathy and people like Steve and the things that particularly Kathy said 
about taking the best practice. We know it's a long time since we've looked at this. Well, I think we all know that it needs a serious look at, and the government has asked us to focus on outcomes. And we know it's the deprived areas. I live in my, in my ward, is in West Whittle, but I'm also aware of isolated pockets. But in these other areas, yeah, I know I'm this. Yeah, but anyway, my main concern is, could you give us a more of an outline on the remodeling and have that look at the outcomes? And can we have an assurance? These are my two questions. First one is that. The second one is, can we have an assurance that you will be working closely with people like Kathy and people like Steve when the, when the consultation is proper? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. We've got a very detailed six-week consultation process that will be online as well as um, delivered through 24 meetings. Uh, and in addition to that, there will also be required <coughs> for staff consultation, consultation with individuals around our health service who are part of the um, recommendations in terms of having a much more detailed memorandum of understanding with them to ensure that they uh, also progress and deliver early childhood services in line with the outcome framework that we've developed. So I am confident, yes, that we will look, we will look 